you know, I met Avi in reserve somewhere, the reserve somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in the in the West Bank one day, and he asked, he looked at me, and he asked me if if I have a dream, and I said yes. I, my dream is to write something about those undercover soldiers, about the mental price that they are paying for their actions, about the the price that their families are paying, their friends, all the people who surrounding them, and also. I want to talk about the Palestinian side. And Avi said, yeah, I'm sharing the same dream for a long time. I told Meital, my wife, I'm resigning. I'm leaving my job as my day job. And she said, okay, go follow your dream. The show that we wrote, me and Avi both are Israelis, Zionists, who served in the Israeli army. We are not comparing the violence from the terror to what Israel are, Israeli army is doing. You won't see in Fauda soldiers who's going to kill kids or civilians just because they want to kill someone and they just, this is the way they fight. No, the opposite. They risk their life in order to save others' lives. From the other side, the terrorists are just want to kill as, mu as much more Israelis as, as they can. But it doesn't say that they don't have lives. What are we trying to do? That those terrorists still have kids, have wives, love, they love them, they cherish them, they yeah. care for them. And this is seeing what we see, what we, we're trying to see, show. But we're not comparing the violence of the Israeli side and to the Palestinian side. It's, 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 you cannot do that. I don't remember who said it. I think Golda Meir said it. I don't know if I'm quoting her right. She said, um, if we will put our guns down, we, will, we, we won't have guns, the Israelis. What will happen? You know, won't be Israel. We're going to be vanished. If the Palestinians or anybody else will put their weapons down, they're going to be at peace. And I think this is the difference. I was every, every morning in my school, we were singing a song called, a song for a peace, Shir la Shalom, hoping for a peace. Um, that's what we, every day we were singing. When I'm educating my kids, I'm educating them that first of all, we want peace. Second of all, we need to see people as people. I have so many Arab friends, so many. My father had so many Arab friends, even though we were fighting for our country, but it doesn't matter. People are people. And so I think um, we, this, is, this is the way we, we, we're educating our kids. I'm educating my kids that you have to be very moral, you have to be uh, to uh, to understand that the other side. Sometimes it looks like that they have uh, they portrayed you in a different way, but way. They want to do something else, but you have to first of all to 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 feel better, to feel good with yourself, to go to sleep at night, to close your eyes, and to say, "I did the best as I as I could. I did the right thing. You know, I did the right thing. I have to go to sleep and feel it and understand." that we need to have hope for peace all the time, all to, 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 to chase the peace all the time from the other, other one hand. And in the other hand, if you, just if you are in a danger, fight. We are all people and it depends how you learn the language. You know, my father used to tell me, I, we are Arab Jews. Now listen, we are Arab Jews. There is Christian Arabs, there are Muslims Arab, we are Arab Jews. I, his heritage, his culture is, came from Iraq. We were in my house, we were, we were uh, listening to Tchaikovsky and Bach, but also for Farid Al-Atrash and, and, and Abdel Halim Hafez. So it was all together. So I think you, if you will see my father, you will, if you can think he's a Palestinian, Yemeni, you, you don't know who he is. Because, you know, we are all born and raised at the same territory. It's just the language. <laughs>